spring game, hockey loses the national title, and some transfer portal news you're going to want to know all about. You are Locked On Boston College, your daily podcast on the Boston College Eagles. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This is Locked On Boston College. I'm your host, AJ Black. I'm the editor and publisher of Eagle Insider, part of the 247 Network. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs help you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. Now, we have a 30-minute show every day. I don't know how I'm going to get through everything that's happened this weekend because it has jam-packed with news. We are going to get into the spring game for football. Basketball landed two transfer portal additions, and hockey played in the national title game, and it didn't go as people had hoped. So let's kick it off with football. We're going to start off with the spring game. The Jay McGillis spring game kicked off on Saturday, ending the spring practice uh, part of the schedule for BC. They had 15 practices. The spring game was number 15. And it was one of the most packed spring games I've been to. I've been to spring games for about 20 years, 20 plus years. And I can say this is the first time I went to a parking lot and it was absolutely packed. Like I couldn't find a parking spot and there were people all over the place. And there were people that were former players. Um, you saw that Will Blackman, his job is alumni relations. So Isaac Yitam, John Johnson. Um, I was sitting near Finn Durstein was there. And uh, Marcus Valdez. So you saw like different players from different generations at the game. Luke Keekley, I believe, was, I think he was there. I, I know he went to the event at the night, but we got to see the team play. And the first thing that stood out to me, first thing that I noticed was the, the improvement on the defensive side of the ball. You saw a number of interceptions. Buck Jones had one, Sione Hala. Uh, there was a third one, and I'm totally blanking on who it was on. Uh, Paris Sachs. Edwin Kalengi and Donovan Nazaraku had some sacks. They were good. They were playing much faster and, and freer. And they got to play a little bit more physical. And I want to say that too. That the big change that we saw from Bill O'Brien and the way he practices versus what Jeff Halfley practiced as is the physicality in practice. I felt like Jeff Halfley at times was nervous about all his players getting hurt. And you watch the spring game and it was basically two hand touch. He was just terrified of letting their guys hit. I went to three or four scrimmages this, this, this um, preseason. And I can tell you they were hit. They were playing, you know, there were no like blow up hits. Uh, there were a couple, but there weren't any, um, they weren't letting guys just like wreck other guys, but they were letting them be physical. They absolutely would. And I think that was a big difference. Now folks may say to yourself, like you were watching the game and going, huh? Alex Broom is on crutches with a pretty significant knee brace on. Is that bad? Yeah, that looked pretty bad. Logan Taylor didn't play. We didn't see um, uh, Lewis Bond didn't play. There were a few guys that were out and they were dinged up from practice. But then I would say to you, yeah, maybe be you know, O'Brien with a physical illness maybe got a few of those got hurt. But like, remember last year's spring game, half of the defensive line was out too, and that was under Halfley. So. I don't blame O'Brien for this. Now everyone's going to look at the quarterbacks. That's that's usually the first thing everyone goes towards. And I sat I sat in the in the fan section and I had everyone behind me talking about the quarterbacks the entire game. Thomas Castellanos was definitely uh, not on his A game in this game, and I would say he got outshone by Grayson James, the transfer from FIU, who threw some nice passes for the second team. Um, but I also want to say a few different things here. Castellanos, he, uh, he had a beautiful pass at the end of the game to Jaden Skeet, like just dropped it on a dime to him in the end zone for a touchdown. But I feel like O'Brien was doing things specifically to Castellanos to break some bad habits. And specifically in a game like this, he wasn't going to let him run. You don't want to get him hurt. And you know he can do it, so you don't need to focus on that. They made him stay back there and throw it. And that caused some bad passes. And I, I think that was on him. Now, James, he got the ball out quick. He had some nice crisp passes. And I don't want to take anything away from that because I thought he looked good when he was doing that. But let's also make sure that we're clear here. 
he was part of the second team. He's playing against the second team defense. So there's you got to take it with a grain of salt. I th- I saw I've seen I've seen articles already that's like is this going to be a quarterback con- uh, tr- controversy going into the summer? I mean, it's good that you have a guy that could possibly challenge for him. Is it is it a challenge right now? Are they going to kick Castellanos out? I I would be surprised. But we'll see. We're going to have Mitch Wolf on tomorrow to talk about this specific question because I think he's got some thoughts on that. Other things that stood out. I loved the play of um, Reed Harris, who many people don't know, who's a uh, he's a sophomore now, redshirt sophomore, wide receiver. I think he's six four, six five. He played with the second team. He's a big dude. He is a big dude, um, and made some nice catches and nice runs after the catch. So they got to find a way to get him out there. Um, I also would be remiss to say that Luke McLaughlin, uh, who is a walk on, and I know some people really like him also had a really good game. Um, he is a lot smaller than some of these other guys, uh, but he looked good out there. Defensively, the name that I saw that I really was impressed with was Ryan Turner. Ryan Turner, defensive back from Ohio State. Saw him break up a pass. I saw him absolutely, we talked about physicality earlier, saw him absolutely lay the wood on, uh, so I forget who the wide receiver was, but he just plowed him. Uh, so he had a, a good play. Uh, defensive line wise, I said Azaraku, he, you know, he looked good. You know, you look at the, the totality of the game and you saw the first half was a scrimmage and then they did situational plays for the second half. So you saw third downs the, and, and Bill O'Brien was on microphone the whole time. So he would tell you what he was doing, uh, which was cool. Uh, you got third down, you had uh, red zone, you had backed up, you had all these different things. You had end of the game situations. And what I what I got from that, now Halfley did do pieces of that, but I saw a level of order and attention to detail that reminded me a little bit of like, you know, this is a guy from the Belichick coaching tree, right? Seemed a little bit more like that. Like you, 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 you're tr- you Bill Belichick always talks about like, you know, you got to do all these certain things to make sure your team is prepared. It looked like O'Brien had his team prepared. And that I think was a big uh, takeaway. It was, it was a fun event and you know, you saw a lot of fans there. There was a ton of recruits. I've got the whole, well, I've got most of the list of the guys that you want to know about on uh, Eagle insider. Uh, It was, it was a good event and a good way to end the, end the, um, end the springs, the the spring segment of, of practice, excuse me. Now, now what happens next is the transfer portal. And I talk about things that we have to jam in. BC lost a player to the transfer portal just two days ago as Joseph Griffin, who, if you follow me on Tw- um, Eagle Insider, you knew this wasn't going to be much of a surprise because I haven't seen him in practice all, all uh, spring. 6'4", wide receiver, who was a four-star. Remember, had that game-winning catch uh, from Emmett Moorhead against NC State when NC State was ranked in 2022. Didn't see much of him last year. I mean, he had some nice catch, uh, some catches here and there, but he wasn't the same um, playmaker. He's gone. He's entering the transfer portal. This was not a big surprise. Now, from here, I want you guys to be aware that the transfer portal opens again on Tuesday. And I believe this, the coaching staff, uh, if, if they haven't already, are going to start talking to players about what their roles are going to be um, and where they're going to land on the depth chart going into the summer. You might have some guys entering the transfer portal. I don't know how many you're going to enter, and I don't expect to see any like huge names. But I wouldn't be surprised if BC loses some players. And I know from what I've heard, that O'Brien's going to be active if to, to find some spots to fill in if he needs to. So that's the next step. And we're going to be all over that here on Eagle um, on, t- sorry, locked on BC. So make sure you stay locked on to our YouTube channel or wherever you get your podcasts. Now in our second segment, speaking of transfer portal, the Boston college men's basketball team lost some players for the last couple of weeks. They lost five of them, but they just recouped two of them. Two, two different players. We'll hear about who those players are and what they could bring to BC in just a moment. Mm. 
When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just a job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who are actively searching for a new job but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. This is Locked On Boston College. I am your host, AJ Black. And BC men's basketball has had fans gnashing their teeth over the last couple of weeks as they've seen five players enter the transfer portal. We've seen Jaden Zachary, Claude L. Harris, Mason Madsen, Prince Oligby, and Armani Mighty all enter the portal. Now, Mason Madsen on Sunday, he entered the he, as after entering the portal, is going to join his twin brother Gabe at Utah. So he's gone. Jaden Zachary is I heard is checking out Clemson. Claudel Harris is checking out Georgia and Texas A&M. So there are some good spots for some of these players. But you know that BC is going to have to figure out some way to get some players back in. And they're going to need to get some talented players as well because you're down your top three scorers now with Harris, Zachary, and Post all gone. The scoring is going to have to come from somewhere. On Sunday, the Eagles added two players to the transfer portal. The first one they added was St. Bonaventure big man Chad Venning. Chad Venning is a 6'10 center slash forward, uh, formerly of Morgan State, who transferred to St. Bonaventure and is now on it, going to be on his third team. Last season, he was second team All Atlantic, All AT, All. Uh, all in 10, excuse me, averaging 13.4 points per game to go along with 4.6 rebounds per game. I think he's like 260 pounds too. He's a bigger dude. He is not the same kind of big man that you had in Quinton Post. He is not a three-point shooter. Not many big guys are. Is he an upgrade over Armani Mighty? Absolutely. Is he going to fill the role that Quinton Post did? No. So he's a different kind of player. He's not going to be able to do stretch the floor like Post did, and he's not a scorer like Post is. You know, his high was uh, he scored 22 points twice and 23 points. So he's had some games where he's been able to score some points, but he's also a foul machine. He's been in foul trouble in a lot. And um, as Beacon Street Ball tweeted out, um, every game he played against a Power 5 program, he fouled out. So that's not a good sign. That being said, he is fills a very big role uh, that you need. Uh, he's experienced. So you're bringing in Jaden Hastings next year and uh, as, as a redshirt freshman. And I know the staff is very high on him. Uh, he is the kid from IMG Academy who um, sat out this year. Hey, when you get a guy um, like venting you you're adding in some talent there so you're you're looking at what you got there now you have a couple more spots left and bc added to that that um that um need sorry in the transfer portal spots with a um guard from clemson now they added josh beetle who uh, entered the portal just about a week ago Beadle is a 6'3 guard from Clemson who averaged, he played 32 of 36 games last season, averaging three points per game, shooting 50% from the floor. Now, I don't know what he's going to bring. Now, Beacon Street Balls, he tweeted out that he thinks this guy's a high ceiling guy, but still is worried uh, that you're not, you, you don't still have a guy that can score. So you have a couple more spots left. Beadle, Beadle, if he's high, high, High ceiling, and maybe you know he's a guy that's played in the ACC. He's one. Um, maybe he's a character type guy that you can bring in, and hopefully he'll find his role here with BC. I think he has one more year left. That I, I get, but like, I'm still worried. You still have two spots left. You need to find a guard that can score because you have Chaz Kelly, you have Fred Payne, and DJ Hand, and I don't think I have not seen all any of the three of them be, be, uh, be a consistent scorer yet. 
Now, many of these guys could, but we haven't seen it yet. So not sure where that's going to come from. Um, I'm worried. I have to say I'm a little concerned of where this team is right now. Now, there may be an ace up their sleeve. They might have a guy, like I said before, like TJ Power of Duke, guy who had, was down between BC and Duke, um, who did not find any playing time this year. He's a five-star recruit. Um, maybe he'll enter the portal. I have not seen him enter it yet, but it could happen. Maybe there's another name out there that we just don't know about yet. There's Deontay, uh, G- Deontay Green from Florida State who averaged 14 points per game. You got some guys there that could score, uh, you know, a guy like him that could play the wing a little better than Prince Oligby. Then you get your cooking a little bit here. But for now, I still don't see where this team is in terms of next year. I'm still concerned that they don't have a, a go-to scorer. Um, and there's, there's worries about, you know, the bigs. I mean, we could talk about Venning, but, uh, you know, he played eight for the A-10, which isn't a bad conference, but he also got a ton of foul trouble. I'm, I'm a little bit concerned of where this program is right now. Um, and I, I just see regression in their future unless they can figure some things out. Now, in our final segment, the spot that I think some people want to hear about and other people are just absolutely tired of. We'll have to talk about the hockey game on Saturday night. We'll get into all that in just a moment. It's playoff time in the NBA and NHL, baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs and dunks on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. You can do prop bets to your heart's desire in Major League Baseball. Think a pitcher's going to strike out five or more players? You can bet on it. Think they're going to do seven or more? Bet on it. Nine or more. You thinking you're feeling crazy? Go for it. What are you waiting for? Visit fanduel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. This is Locked On Boston College AJ Black. Now the part that we all didn't want to talk about. We'll talk about the hockey game on Saturday night, where Boston College lost their national championship game against Denver 2 0. And you all watched it. You all saw the same things that I saw. Let's 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 start with the early stuff before the game even started. You caught a Gautier go out there and say well, something about put uh, making the other team have tears. I believe is what he said he was going to do, and I immediately cringed because I'm like, why are you doing that? Uh, and <laughs> against a Denver team that's been playing red hot, he gets out there. He starts talking trash. He gets to the game. And BC gets, I think it was a breakaway in the first first period. I think it was Ryan Leonard. And this goalie that Denver has, the Pios, had this goalie named Matt Davis. And I was like, wow, what a save. And they got a couple more chances, and he saved everything. You get to the, th- you, after Denver scores two goals, one of them, an absolute fluke that was just like a bouncing puck that just had the weirdest rotation that went behind uh, Jacob Fowler. BC goes down to nothing and immediately once they're down to nothing, the way Denver's playing, you're saying, this is it. They're not going to win this. Denver's defense was pretty good. They got their sticks everywhere. You couldn't get anything going. And then the play of the game, the play, the play that I saw that I watched and I said, this is over is when BC in the top of the, the beginning of the third period, they get their first power play and they get a look where Ryan Leonard makes a shot that I have no idea how this Davis goalie, Mark Davis, um, saves this. It was insane. He just dove. It was like ones that you see in, in video highlights. He did that, and that was it. Once he saved that, the Pios had that. And there was nothing you could do. And that's the tough part of of single elimination tournaments, right? You just run into a hot team, and it's over. And that's what BC did. Denver was filled with and this, these are the types of teams that I was asking BC hockey blogger about with older guys that are bigger, more mature, that can just muck up the neutral zone with their big bodies and slow you down. And that's what Denver did. And BC got sniped. This stunk. <laughs> I don't blame BC. They played their game. They, they had like 25 plus shots on 
on Denver in that last period. But every the guy was in uh, he was in God mode. Like there's nothing you're gonna do to stop that. Um, and BC just you know they ran into they ran into a juggernaut and Denver the best team in college hockey history in terms of, you know, most title wins, they are not a win. And you, I don't hate on them. There was, this was not a game where, you know, the refs did anything that made it go one way or the other. The Denver was a, a cheap team. They were, they were fine. They played well. They, they deserved the win. BC just got beat and it stinks because BC was supposed to be this, the, you know, they had a 15 game winning streak. They were the best team in the country. They were number one. Um, it looked like, you know, they had just sh- shredded Michigan two days before. They looked every bit the national title uh, winner. And they just ran into the team that was, you know, their kryptonite. Um, and it was, it's a tough loss because now you know as well that this team is not going to be the same. Uh, constitution next year. And you know, no one expected that, but you just knew it was going to happen. And already today, cut Gautier is gone. A sophomore, he's going to go to the ducks after getting traded from the flyers. You guys all remember that um, he's gone. And uh, a pretty well connected hockey Twitter account says they expect, but will Smith to sign with the San Jose sharks. He's gone. So it's sad because you're losing some of your star power. There's, there's what, like 120 points right there gone but you also have to trust greg brown the one thing about all this even though you lost the national title you can still lift your head and say bc's back this is not umass's conference anymore this isn't northeastern's it's boston college's conference again they won the hockey east tournament they were the best team in the conference and Greg Brown is a big reason for that they brought in a killer recruiting class you know obviously with Fowler Smith uh Perot and um, and Leonard, you had all these great players come in, and they're going to continue. You know, they've got guys coming in Hagen's next year, who's, who's who's one of the best players in the country. They've got some really good ones coming in, but still, it still stinks to who's like that. Uh, and we'll have to wait until next year. But it was a fun season. It was a magical ride. They, you know, it was great watching every game. The student section packing Conti Forum again the energy that they had, some of those big wins, you know, just smoking Boston University in the uh, Hockey East tournament game, smoking UMass. You know, it was it was fun, uh, but it's, it's over. So that basically, now you have baseball and you have women's lacrosse and that's it. And a lot of transfer portal news. And we'll be getting into all of that this week. So make sure to check us out. This is Locked on BC. I'm your host, AJ Black. And we're going to wrap things up here. Thank you all so much for checking out today's episode. If you have not done so already, please subscribe and like our podcast wherever you get them, including YouTube. Hit the subscribe button before you head out. We'll be back again tomorrow with Mitch Wolf. We're going to dive in deeper in the spring game in a way only Mitch can do it. We'll talk about any transfers and any other news that you're going to want to know about because the news be coming hard and fast here on Locked On Boston College, your team every day.